Peter, chapter number 2. Second Peter 2. And verse 14. Scripture says, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart they've exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water. Clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. Lord, bless your holy word now, and give me unction to preach it. And I pray, Father, for the Spirit of God to take over in this house, and you'd speak to the hearts of the people. In your holy name, Lord, and amen. You can be seated. This is the Apostle Peter talking. He's talking about people that have been deceived, completely deceived. Deception will mark the age in which we live. Deception, you've lived through deception this morning. You'll go right back at, into it this afternoon. You'll live through it all week long. You are being conditioned. Your mind is being programmed. You have an agenda that's being worked out through you. Make no mistake about it whatsoever. A lot of people say, well, then how is it then, preacher, if God is so powerful and God is the Almighty, why does he let stuff like this happen? Have you ever had anybody say to you, why does God not do away with Satan? I mean, after all, isn't he the father of lies? Isn't he the liar from the beginning? Isn't he the one who worketh in the children of disobedience? I mean, after all, if you could do away with Satan, that would change everything. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. But the bottom line is, God using Satan. He's using him. He has a greater purpose in what he's doing with Satan. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter number 11, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments. It is ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath first given to him, that it shall be recompensed to him again. Now note carefully verse 36 of Romans 11. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. The apostle Paul began to rejoice when God began to show to him his will and what he was going to do to overrule the power of Satan. Notice carefully he said of him nothing exists apart from Almighty God. Just get a hold of that for a moment. There is no life that originates of itself. There is no life apart from the life giver. All life has come forth from Him. The Bible said He upholdeth all things by the word of His power. Of Him, therefore, dear friend, is everything in creation, or it wouldn't exist apart from Him. For the past two weeks I've been saying, thank you Lord that I exist. Have you ever th thanked God that you exist? Or do you think you just showed up and it's all because of you, your mom and dad, whoever brought you into this world? Nobody could be any further from the truth. The Bible says in, in, in here in the Romans 11, of him and through him are all things. Through, what does that mean? That means that he works out his purpose. God has a much higher purpose. The word of God is quick, he says, and powerful. The scripture says, As the rain cometh down in the snow from heaven, and watereth the earth, it may bring forth in bud and give seed to the sower. So shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth. It will not return unto me void, but accomplish that which I please. 
He said, my ways are not your ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways. My mind than your mind. And so he is. Don't try to second guess God. And then to him the Bible says, all creation, including Satan, is answerable to God. This includes inanimate objects answerable to God. Everything about creation answerable to God. It all comes back to the one who gave it. Can you imagine in your mind a time when there was nothing, nothing, nothing but God. Amen. And that time is when we will see it one day. For we shall see Him as He is. We will be taken out of the creation and brought before the Creator. And on that day we will rejoice. Many of the things today that are questions we'll be shouting about then. Things today that we cannot see, we shall know then and glorify His name. Ephesians 1.11 says this, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of Him, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Is he still doing that, preacher? Absolutely. You kidding? He's Almighty God. He's the Almighty. You understand that Satan has never seen the essence of God. He's never seen it. Find it in the Bible from Genesis through Revelation. When God appears before Satan, it is a manifestation of himself so that Satan can comprehend who he's looking at. But as far as that essence of Almighty God, that's reserved for you and for me. It said the pure in heart shall see God. Daniel chapter 4 verse 35 says, And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand. We need to be reminded of that when we look at the world. It looks like it's completely out of sync. Everything is going downhill. Say, what in the world? Why hasn't God come back? Why hasn't the rapture taken place? That is called the blessed hope. And I'm looking for it to do today. I'm looking for him to come back. If he doesn't come back today, I'm going to be highly disappointed. Why? Because I am appointed unto him, not unto this world. You say, don't people disappoint you? No, because I'm not appointed to them. I don't put much stock in them. But my stock is in the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 14, verse 13, Yea, before the day was, I am He. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now I want you to think about what He just said. Have you read in the book of Revelation where it says that He comes down and declares, Time shall be no more. Have you read that? Most of the commentators say that has to do with a specific period of time. A dispensation that's brought to its end. Well, it may have a general application to that, but I want to tell you something. He's the one who started time. He's the one who can stop it. He's the one who made it. He's the one who can end it. He's the one who said, let there be. And from his voice it all came into being. Read the thing the other day and they were talking about what happened 25 million years ago. I laugh every time I read garbage like that. They were talking, well, this and that, this and this is old. Ah, oh, shut up. He made everything there is. And when he made it, he made it with age. Amen. 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 Time shall be no more. What about that? Job chapter 40, 34 verse 29. When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face, who then can behold him? Did you get that? If he doesn't want you to see him, you won't see him. When he hides his face, who can behold him? So we live in a generation of rebels. And we just live in a generation of deception. We live in a generation that is literally gone screaming mad. Now when I read what I'm going to read to you this morning, you should be fully aware of it. You ought to be, unless you've got your head buried in the sand somewhere, this should speak to your soul. Number one, the social engineers and the one worlders and the globalists have got an agenda as to what they intend to do. And from all intent, it is moving apace exactly as they wanted it to. The end result will be what they expect it to be unless somebody intervenes. Think about what I'm saying. Everything that's happening right now is happening according to what Satan wants to happen. 
and it will take a divine intervention. It will take a direct intervention from Almighty God to stop it dead in its tracks. How many believe that? He worketh all things after the counsel of His own will. Immigration and migration right now. You're watching it. You're watching the country as it is assaulted. And you're watching for these people to re-engineer Americans to become servants. They want to make a globalist out of you. They want to take your... They, this is why they don't teach kids anything about history. American history. They don't teach them anymore. Why? Because to teach kids about this country is to love this country. For it did start good. Amen. And if you don't know that, then you, you're left in the lurch. You're, you're in the dark. You can be controlled. Because all you know is what you're spoon fed. And that's the way most people, sadly to say, most people are. The second thing they're doing to us today is of vaccinations, chemtrails, fluoride. What they're doing to the worst as far as I'm concerned, they're feminizing males. The man is losing his masculinity. These colleges are calling it toxic masculinity. Let me tell you something. God made them male and female. And that man was made in the image of God. And the woman was made in the image of the man. God made that man in his image. And he gave him dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. And he was made to be a man. And my dear friend, once we lose manhood, then what in the world do we have left? It's sick and sad. But this is exactly where they're going. I have never in my lifetime seen as many feminized men as we see on a daily basis now. Feminized, folks. It's almost as if you're looking at a man, you're not sure, but he acts like a woman and sounds like a woman. That's sad. This is not what God wants for mankind. But this is what Satan is creating for mankind. But God will intervene one day. They want to control information. You live in a high-tech world. You can buy a little thing now, set it in your house, put it on the table, and you can tell it what you want. And when you speak to it, it's speaking to somebody online. Somebody is listening to everything that is being said in your house. I listened to an FBI agent yesterday morning on, on, a, on a show on television, and that agent said, and this is at least 10, 15 years old, he said, we can hear a whisper at 50 feet. Boy, isn't that something? Think about that. A whisper at 50 feet. You got one of them? What you've been talking about? You thought, well, this is in here for me to use. No, it's for the, in there for them to observe you, what you're doing. That's what it's about. Be very careful with it. Control of information. You saw just the other day one of the big Hollywood out here. She came out and she wanted a blacklist. A black, what's a blacklist, preacher? A blacklist is where you put a name, a bunch of names down through here of people to avoid. You don't buy from them. You don't give them jobs. They're not part of go what goes on. Why did she do that? Because they did not agree with her politically. This is fascism. This is, this is authoritarianism. This is dictatorship. Under the guise of being an American, it is the most un-American thing you've met in a long time. The blacklisting of humanity. A man told me a few minutes ago as he came through the door, he said, Mark Levine, Levine on Fox News, had a man on there from Google, the man that understood Google real well. And he was talking about how that these people are being, uh, are being looked at because they are doing something with algorithms and something to do with the security and the privacy of people in the country. And I thought to myself, I need to watch this and hear what this man has to say. For I do not believe, my dear friend, that you live live in a cave you live in a high tech world you better get ready for the mark of the beast if you don't know the Lord Jesus they've already got all the groundwork laid the superstructure's there it's already organized it's ready to as they say to just flip a switch and the mark of the beast is going to show up and good little old religious people that go to these houses with crosses on them will rock, walk right up and get their mark. Because, I mean, after all, it's all about love. Love, isn't it about love? I mean, it's all about love. And so, therefore, I'm going to love my country, love my people, love, love anybody. It doesn't matter who they are and what they are. And so, therefore, I'm going to be, become part of them. This is what the Lord wants me to do. He wants me to be here and love them. Let me tell you something. The Bible says love rejoices in the truth. 
False flags are used. What's a false flag? A false flag is when something is used to, 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 uh, to bring about an end result. To garner, to garner, uh, uh, to garner uh, uh, agreement or to garner, um, start a movement, a false flag is used. Open your eyes. Listen. Watch. Because this stuff is coming all the time. Satanism, occultism, violence, sexual depravity in the entertainment industry. It is so sick and so sad. There's a reason for it though because they want to dehumanize you, desensitize you. They want you to, they want this, they want you to get a constant constant dose of this stuff to so where that you are no longer shocked when you see what's coming listen i looked this past week at a sheep that had a human face i thought to myself this is just a this is you know this this is this is just something that that's like a science fiction i dug a little deeper and the human face now note carefully it's not human like your face is but it had two eyes it had a nose and it had a mouth and it had all of this hair on it the part of the coat of this of the sheep and i thought to myself if you dirty dogs you're out there making hybrid animals you're that's right that's what you're doing and it doesn't matter to you what you do to an animal and what if this thing really does have a part human being what about what are we doing now do you realize that they're taking babies all the way up to nine months let me read to you from the Illinois this is the state this is from Illinois the state SB 25 the reproductive health act here's some of the points in it permitting abortion up until the moment of birth Effectively eliminating licensing requirements or inspections of aborted facilities, abortion facilities. Laying the groundwork for the repeal of Illinois parental notification law. Isn't that something? Your kids can get an abortion and you don't know anything about it. Allowing non-physicians to perform abortions. Removing language requiring medical care for a baby born alive. And then removing the requirements that coroners investigate a material Death due to abortion. My, my, my. This is in the magazine Salvo. If you want to check it out for yourself, this is issue 50 fall 2019. I want to tell you something, folks. I have to do this to have peace with God. I rebuke it. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke it. And I rebuke everybody that's got anything to do with it. I, I have no part in the killing of babies. If you're a baby killer, get away from me. I want nothing to do with it. Yet they're doing it, my dear friends. They're doing it. Now I've got something right here that's quite remarkable. And this is, uh, let me see, I hope I haven't lost it. Here it is. Just a few years ago, it hadn't been long, one of the actresses and singers in our country began to stick her tongue out and it hung down. I mean, that tongue was stuck out and hanging down. She thought that was cool. Now, whether she has enough sense to understand where that came from or not, I have no idea. But if you can pull a shot in here, if you can tighten up on this thing right here, this is Callie. This is Callie. Can you get that? Draw in as close as you can. This is Callie. Who's Callie? Callie is a demon god from India, she's a goddess. But the part I want you to see, and I'll leave this up here after the service so you can come up and see it for yourself. Her tongue sticking straight down. And I knew when I saw this girl do this not too long ago that that's exactly what Callie does. Callie is worshipped by thuggies. In the 1800s, they used to, people were traveling in southern India. They would be traveling on the trails and so forth from place to place. And these people would intermingle with them. Let me be part of your, your journey here and we can, we can defend one another. And at night, they would take a cord and they would, they would literally strangle the people to death. And then they would bury their bodies. The Brits came in there and the British, this was part of the British Empire, and they came in there. And they had to deal with these thuggies. So they, the word thug entered into the English language. And when you say thug today, you're literally making a direct reference to a thuggy who worshipped Cali. Now here was part of their worship. 
Their worship was that they would strangle that person to death. Strangling that person to death was an act of worship. Bury them and then rob them and take everything that they had and then go find their next victim. They say that millions died at the hands of the thuggies. But here's the point. They come in and mingle with the people making their journey and they act like friends. And then at night, while they're asleep, the thugs rise up against them. And they choke them to death. And all of a sudden, the ones that they thought were their friends become the murderers. So if you're sticking your tongue out and it's going down like that, you may think that that goddess that you're worshiping is your friend, but she will do you in one day. Satan only uses and then abuses. And when he's done with you, he'll toss you aside. This is to warn you, young people, and everybody in this house. The next time you see a tongue shoot out and go down like that, that is the spirit of Callie. This is a hideous looking thing. She's got her foot on Shiva, one of the Hindu gods. She's holding a severed head in her left hand. She has skulls hanging around her neck. She's the goddess of death, Thuggy, the goddess of power, Thuggy. This is a miserable demonic creature, yet they worshiped her, and they're doing it today. Because when you see them do that and stick their tongue out, they may, not, they may be completely ignorant of what I'm preaching today, but they have received the spirit of Kali. And they're receiving these spirits all the time and don't even have a clue of what's happening to them. I'm going to give you three more things and I'll come to a close. They have an agenda. This one world government and the globalists have an agenda. It's called Agenda 21. Let me give you just a few of the points from it. They're important because you've seen it happen now. It's right in front of you. They want to put nature above man. They want to replace nations with a world government. Right, we know that. And we also know that both Democrat and Republican, not all, but many of the Republicans are just as much a globalist as the Democrats. They want to destroy the family and depopulate the planet. Destroy the family. Have they done that? They're redefining marriage. Fight, people. Fight. Don't let them ram this down your throat. Resist this stuff. And pray for the coming of the Lord Jesus. They want to indoctrinate your children into enviro socialism. What is enviro? Environmental socialism. How many of you have heard about the Green New Deal? Have you heard about the Green New Deal? That's in viral socialism. I don't know if some people just can't wake up. They really can't. They've they, they got this dullness about them. The Bible talks about dullness. You know, I mean, you just the only thing that stirs some people today is a ball game or pornography. I think a lot of the problem in here this morning with some of you is that you've been glued to pornography. And you sure wouldn't want your wife to find out about it, would you? That's why there's no power in your life. That's why your prayer life is gone. That's why you have no, you have, you have no joy in your heart. It's because you've given in completely to your flesh. man told me the other day, he said, Preacher, he said, I was in a church the other day and he said, they were talking about all the men in there that were on pornography. And he said, the pastor said, well, he said, I'll watch a little of it too, but that's okay, we're all sinners. Imagine, imagine, a, imagine a sermon from somebody who's been watching pornography. Can you imagine a spiritual power or something like that? Here's the thing, folks. Pornography is an addiction. And it reaches into the depths of your soul. Anything that has to do with your sexual identity has a direct relationship with your identity before God. God made you one way or the other. And when it comes down to that, you are assaulting the image of God in you. Do you realize in the Bible when it talks about killing a dog or killing an animal and then killing a man that God makes such a big difference? Here's why. That animal is not made in the image of God. 
but a man is. So when you assault a man, you are literally by extension assaulting God himself. It's not that the man is God, but the man is the image of God. And there's a sanctity about a human being. There's a sanctity about a man that an animal does not have. This is why people today are kissing their dogs. This is why today that people are treating animals like they're babies. Because they don't want you to know there's a difference between an animal and a human being. And there's a vast difference. And by the way, if you're kissing your dog, you better get ready because that dog can... I, there, I, know, I saw a thing the other day, it's been about a week ago. Apparently this person was a big kisser of his dog and he lost his leg. He got, he got, a, he got a, some kind of a bacterial infection from it. You see, the dog is a scavenger, folks. I'm not against dogs. But thank God for a good old dog. Got no, I've got nothing against a dog, but let me explain something to you. A dog can eat stuff you can't eat. Let's put it simply. It can eat it. It can, it, can, it can digest it, and it'll be okay. There are things you eat that a dog can't eat. A dog is a scavenger. He's a scavenger. So remember that. And uh, I don't want to get into too much detail with you this morning, but if you know much about dogs, just kind of watch them and, me, and uh, you'll think twice about planting a big kiss on one. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I mean, I, even when I was lost without God and darkest dark, I never did have a desire to kiss a dog. <laughs> never did. <laughs> that one passed me. No, nope, never did have a desire. And then finally, the attack on marriage and family by the erasing the traditional heterosexual values using pornography, sexual lab liberation, gender dysphoria, homosexuality, and transgenderism. That's all new now, isn't it? That's just daily, every day. And every day they're coming out with a new sexual identity. I mean, the list keeps growing, keeps growing. I'm not male and I'm not female. I saw a thing the other day. He's not a male, he's not a female. And I thought to myself, what are you? He wasn't even sure himself or herself or whatever she was he or whatever they were. It's got to that point now where it has gone completely screaming mad over the edge. Used to, you know, well, I'm, I'm a male and I want to be a female. I'm female, I want to be a male. Okay, stuck with that. Now, you don't know what you are. Isn't that something they call it? That's, uh, that's androgyny. And a lot of these gods and goddesses are androgynous. In other words, they're both male and female. If you pick up that spirit, if you embrace that, you've picked up that spirit. All right? Now, let me be plain, plain talk, plain talk. If you pick up the spirit of Cali, embrace transsexualism, embrace gender dysphoria, Embrace all of this stuff. You have embraced the spirit of Antichrist. And all that is left is for you to embrace him. And you will when he shows up. And this is why I say this morning, hallelujah to God. Even so come, Lord Jesus, come. I mean, folks, I don't know about you, but this, this fires me up. I don't live in a cave. My head's not buried in the sand. There's too much coming together. I've never seen anything like it in my life. The Lord Jesus is coming back. Amen. Amen. Wouldn't that be something if he came today? Amen. Lord of God. I'd like to be waving at you as we go up. Amen. How you doing? <laughs> up we go. In a moment, the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, trumpet shall sound. Dead shall be raised incorruptible. We shall be changed. Show you a secret. We shall not all sleep. But we shall be changed. Hallelujah to God. Oh, that's a pie in the sky and a sweet by and by. I don't believe that's a pipe dream, preacher. You can stay here if you want to. I'm leaving. The Lord's coming back. I really believe it. And I believe we are close. If something doesn't happen to change this country, and I love my country, I love my country, but if something doesn't happen to change the country, we're headed right smack to the Antichrist. And we can't have both. If the Antichrist shows up, folks, we're going up. And he's at the door. Hallelujah to God. Father, in Jesus' name, bless your word. I've given them what's on my heart. I know there's a lot of stuff. Well, I just scratched the surface. Just scratched around a little bit this morning. 
There's so much of this stuff, and they know it. Many of them out there know things about stuff that I've never even heard of. They know. They read. They look. They're aware. They're alive. But there's one thing I know. I know you're coming. And I pray even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Your holy name I pray.